Yo, what's poppin'? Welcome to Brewman Rhapsody, and we are back here at Motorcycles of Greensboro with the man, the myth, and the legend. It's the professor, you guys. Ah, bro, how are you? I am living the dream, professor. Welcome Howard. back home. Thank you so much. Thank you. And what do we have in front of us here today? Ah, bro, what we have here today is a 2023 Monster. SP. Today's episode, we're going to talk about this bike. We're going to get a little history lesson from my professor. Uh, <laughs> I'll show you on the bike all the features. I'll take it out on the road, share my thoughts with you guys, talk about the cost of ownership and the sign of the Broman score. But before we do any of that, if you're new to Broman, you got to hit that like and click that subscribe button. We put out content every week. Both of them. And your support would mean a lot. It's me, it's your boy Bro, and I am your Broman. The SP, you got Olin's front and rear suspension, Oof. you got nice livery, you got beautiful red seats. Red seat, a little yeah. seat cowl that's red. A little red. seat cowl that's, yeah, yeah, all that good stuff. So, should we give them a little bit of a reminder of the history mm -hmm. lesson? Yes. You think so? You, yes. Would it be good? So, in the early 90s, Ducati was financially struggling. Uh, you know, those are the days of the 888, 851s and 888s. Mm. Most everybody was going to a full fared bike because that's where the market was going. And as the fairings and the performance, the fairings were coming on and the performance levels were going up, cost of motorcycling, motorcycles was going up as well. Well, my friend, my dear friend from Argentina, Miguel Galuzzi, noticed that there was a trend going on in Southern California, which was going backwards. Mm. Taking the fairings off, taking clip-ons off, putting handlebars on, maybe even putting on some more streetable, streetable suspension, yeah. just to make the bike a little more pliable or more affordable. Let's put it that way. Affordable and comfortable. Affordable, comfortable. But the intended purpose of the bike was commute, and getting around Los Angeles traffic oh, yeah. and, and all that and streets. So and in and he designed the naked bike and it started the whole naked bike of movement. Oh, okay. Yes. So they actually started the production of the monster. Ah. Uh, which in nineteen ninety three when it was launched Financially, the monster, the sales of the monster, it was so successful that it saved Ducati uh, from ooh, from the financial distress that they were under at the time. So, so could you say that the monster is the savior of Ducati? Potentially, Potentially. Um, because we don't know if it had not come out and if the sales had not been as su successful, mm. if Ducati would even still be here today. So yeah, think of the fact that the monster has been around since 1993. Ooh. Oh, and it's 30 2023. Years. 30 years. Somebody's turning 30. 30. Aw. Happy birthday. <laughs> they didn't do anything to the mo to no. the engine. The engine is still very much the same as the monster or the monster plus. On the SP, they did the suspension. Mm -hmm. And then you got the Terminioni on the side. It is a homologated exhaust system, so it does have a catalytic converter and it does meet Euro 5 compliance. And you got all the other electronics as well. That's like standard with the Ducati. The quick shifters mm -hmm. and the traction controls and the cornering ABS yeah. and the wheelie control and engine yeah. braking, all of engine those, braking, all that. Yeah, all the wonderful, all the beautiful mode mo modifications that can come out of this side of the bike. Yeah. You mind if I do a quick walk around? Be my guest. Awesome. Starting off from the front, that's a beautiful DRL headlight, the monster headlight that we have going on. At the bottom is that fender. We have the red and black fender with the gold shocks. Love it. Turn signals are mounted to the side, like right under the fuel tank. What I've seen people do is get those like turn signals that go flush with the tank, make it really make it look really cool. All right. So the front brakes are dual 320 millimeter discs with. Brembo brake calipers, four piston calipers. For the wheelbase, we have a 57.9 inch wheelbase. Uh, it's got a seat height of 33.7 inches. A 3.7 gallon fuel tank, weighs about 410 pounds. 
and this bike has a 23 degree rake angle what's the rake angle you ask well draw a perpendicular from the steering mount for the fork tube that's your rake angle shorter the rake angle the more nimble the bike is and larger the rake angle the more stable it is at higher speeds highway speeds and such i love the design i love how it how everything how the lines flow from the rear seat to the rider seat all the way up to the fuel tank pretty cool and pretty neat design you guys and looking at it from the back it's got the little tail light tail light on the rear seat cowl that's a big fender on the rear cowl it tells you it's a monster sp beautiful red seat for the rider as right, so for the fuel tank is the same monster tank different paint scheme i love that hump um, it's got black, red, the Ducati in black, cool, cool, cool. Uh, handlebar controls. Well, on your left hand side, you have your passing lights on top. Here you have your high beam, low beam. This is to toggle to the menus, making selections to the modes and turn signals. This is your horn. On the right hand side is kill switch and starter. Then you have your hazards and your DRL light. Now, this bike does not come with a keyless ignition, this has an old school key. So for this, you gotta put it in here and start her up. Yeah, you got the little Ducati logo. You get a lot of information on this little dash. Fuel gauge, side stand on, of course. You can toggle through a couple of other things down here. You get your air temperature, outside temperature, your time. You have your tachometer, speedometer, tachometer, which riding mode you're on, which gear you're on. And on this side, these are all of your six axis IMU, those things. Quick, that's DQS, the Ducati Kiss Shifter, Traction Control, ABS, and Wheelie Control. Uh, you have your total miles, your fuel range, your trip one, your fuel consumption, your average speed, your trip time, trip two, trip two consumption, and back to your total miles. When you hold and press the button on your left, it gets you your riding modes. We have sport, road, and wet. Can you tell my viewers a little bit about this place I call my second home, Motorcycles of Greensboro? <laughs> and I don't want to call it a dealership because at a dealership, it's all about, you know, to me, like a, a typical dealership is pushy sales guys and the financing officer that's trying to get more money out of you for nothing at all and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Not here. You know, here it's more about sharing stories, sharing experiences, making sure that that you know that whoever decides to purchase a motorcycle from us is happy with it mm -hmm. overall uh, and they you know they go home riding on a new motorcycle feeling like that they actually got something out of it and not just you know signed loan documents. Yeah. you know between Paul and Andrew and Brandon and Troy who just walked by our uh, our illustrious technician technician yeah. um, you know, there's probably about 300 years of combined riding experience wow. in this building. Yeah, yeah. and these guys, are, these guys have experience in all different kinds and genres of motorcycling. Track days, off-road riding, street riding, long distance riding, name it, dirt riding. Someone here has done it. This is Motorcycles of Greensboro. I'll put their website link in the video description below. Come on down, check them out. And when they come check you out, who should they say send them to you? They gotta tell us that the Broman sent them because yeah they'll be immediately part of the family yes so tell them that the bro man sent you and they'll take care of you professor we've been talking for quite some time Abro, don't check that one because mine mine says that it's right o'clock brother <laughs> it's right o'clock let's go <laughs> All right, so if you guys are new to Broman, give us a like and hit that subscribe button. We put out content every week and your support would mean a lot. Let's check out the sound of the spike. <laughs> it's time to do our first test let's make a couple of u-turns well with a steep rake angle a short wheelbase and the you know relative lightweight should be easy let's find out yeah yeah it turns and it's easy to maneuver well, what else would you expect out of a monster <laughs> perfect <laughs> all right time for our second test let's do our pull test okay okay let's go let's go
<laughs> it's a Ducati, man. It's a Ducati. You think 111 horses is gonna be too little? Uh uh. It can pull, man. It can pull. <laughs> ah. All right. First impressions of this motorcycle, huh? I am sitting up quite upright, uh, and uh, my legs aren't bent weirdly at all. I'm pretty comfortable in my seating position. Uh, there's a little bit of a reach for the handlebars, uh, not a lot, like I'm not leaned over or anything, but just a little bit, you know, just a teensy weensy little bit, <laughs> little reach to the handlebars, uh, but it's not uncomfortable at all, not at all. All right, stop sign, brakes, 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 let's check out the brakes, front brakes only, poof, no problemo, no problemo, haha. <laughs> All right, so I am 5'10 with a 31 inch inseam and I can flat foot this bike very easily on both sides. Not an issue, not an issue at all. <laughs> All right, so we are back in road mode, and road mode basically changes your throttle response. It's not as peppy as sport mode, or it's not as direct as it is in sport mode, but it's not a slack at all, at all. Um, it's still got enough kick to it. Come on, man, it's a Ducati, of course. It's got enough in it. Now, it changes. These modes just change the throttle response and the IMUs and stuff, like based on your preferences. Uh, each mode has different ABS and all that settings now for the balance on the spike man. This is a very very well balanced motorcycle It's a Ducati. Now what else can I say and check out this balance no hands still straight <laughs> and upright now uh, Riding this around is not a problem. Um, let's do and check out some other modes. Uh, which one should we go? Let's do wet mode wet mode. Yeah, so wet mode is where all of your nanny systems are at their peak powers so your abs your traction control your wheelie control uh, all of these are at its highest setting so what that means is like it's the computer is gonna pro the, the computer's programmed in such a way that in the rain mode or in the wet mode it's gonna help you not do stupid stuff like not spin out or do anything like you could grab hold of a fistful of throttle and the bike's gonna be like mm, yeah no let's not do that let's not do that i'm trying to keep you alive here man trying to keep you alive so wet mode is good and like the throttle response in this like you really have to wring its uh bring its neck for it to respond but that's how it's supposed to be that's the design of the wet mode now, wind protection on this motorcycle, right? There is none. I'm getting blasted by a lot of wind, a lot of wind. Uh, upper body, head, shoulder, torso, lower body, legs, everywhere. Like, it's like I'm just getting a whole lot of wind. Now, there is a little bit of li that little tiny little fly screen or the front cowl that kind of deflects wind and helps with some wind buffeting, uh, but it's not there's no wind protection like there's none <laughs> you get hit by a lot of wind on warmer days no problem like today no problem on colder days though uh, i'm not so sure and the quick shifter let's talk about the quick shifter right so this has the ducati quick shifter so which means you really don't have to pull in the clutch when you're trying to upshift or downshift uh just keep in mind what the professor said in our previous videos if you're upshifting throttle should be open and if you're downshifting just close the throttle or just gently tap the brakes but the quick shifter works like a charm it's work it works like a charm on my v2 and it works like a charm here on this monster sp it's this so it's really cool now let's check change our modes again let's go into a uh, yeah my funnest mode sport mode you gotta close the throttle and right away man right away you just feel the power just twist the throttle a little bit boop oh yeah let's go yeah that's what the bike's saying not me the bike's like let's go let's go let's go uh well let's calm down a little bit now this motorcycle is a brand new motorcycle it probably had a few miles on it like four or five miles on it so it's still considered to be in the break-in period and in the break-in period you're not supposed to exceed uh go over a certain rev limit or rev range or troy is gonna yell at me so i gotta keep that in mind i gotta keep that in mind i don't want to be yelled at by troy <laughs> Is this a good bike for commuting well yeah it is i mean it's lightweight it's not it doesn't have a whole lot of power although you might think it's just got 111 horses so it's a slouch it isn't the way it puts out the power is 
is a lot of fun. You can commute on it, however, there is no storage space, uh, there are no saddlebags, no, nothing of that sort. So if you're okay with carrying a backpack with your computer, your laptop, whatever in it, or you can put a tank bag and get get some uh, get the most out of it then yeah definitely should be fun for commuting is this a good bike for touring oh uh, no now well i don't know about you guys but on a touring motorcycle i like a few things like i like wind protection i like speakers if possible a comfy seat a wide seat uh, and you know a comfy seat seating position handlebars that i don't have to reach out for and most importantly uh, a decent amount of storage space if not a lot of storage space like i like saddlebags and a tour pack and you know, places to put stuff in like if you're going touring so it's not a touring bike at all you could get out you could get away with like maybe a hundred a couple of hundred miles on it uh, but yeah it's not a touring motorcycle is this a good bike for beginners well it is uh, and it isn't it's like a little bit of both in my humble opinion now if you ask me are Ducatis a good motorcycle for beginners they are really not unless you get like one of the scramblers the scramblers put down what about 70 horses 74 75 horses or 89 with the 1100 that's a decent am amount of horsepower those are really good for beginners in my opinion although they do cost a little bit uh, so there's that now the monster sp yeah this is this can be a beginner friendly bike uh, if you if you have throttle control if you have enough throttle control and are disciplined with it then sure you could possibly uh, a beginner could ride this motorcycle safely and confidently but if you don't uh, if you're like brand new to motorcycling i would stay away from it uh, because i in my personal opinion like you know everybody drops their bikes and these bikes are too pretty to drop and you know they are going to be expensive to fix because well it's italian so not the best beginner bike but we could get away with it so what about the cost of ownership bro man what about the cost of ownership So, in conclusion, the, the Ducati Monster SP. Well, this is a little different from the Monster Plus, the Monster and the Monster Plus that Ducati puts out. It's got all in suspension, front and rear. It's got the lithium ion battery, different seats, different livery. Uh, looks, it looks a little different with all the all the color specs and it's got a steeper rake angle so you know they are this is geared more towards spirit spirited riding or you know taking it to the track and all that uh, and all that stuff uh, when i say a little steeper rake angle i mean this has a 23 degree rake angle whereas the regular monster that's what 23.9 or 24 so that's like a degree less definitely riding this bike i can tell you from my own experience having ridden both the monster plus and the monster sp the monster sp is way more fun although on paper it might not look that much like it's only four pounds lighter it's got the same power and all that like puts out the same amount of power or whatever but i think it's it's the sum of all those small changes the little changes uh with the oil in suspension front and rear and, and this little bit things here and there i think that's what makes makes up for all that uh makes that big deal of a difference if you like more spirited riding and you want it to handle better and be more uh, reactive and stuff you definitely want the Olin suspension because Olin's makes one of the best suspensions in the market but that's totally up to you is the monster sp the bike for you well head on down to your closest ducati dealer take one out for a spin and check it out well thanks for watching you guys keep your knees in the breeze and i'll see you soon bro out mm -hmm.